وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We're still talking about the topic of divorce and we said it's important to talk about because there's so many actions which are haram that take place at the time of divorce, at the time of marital discord, which ruin families and cause serious problems for people. And if people knew the etiquettes of divorce according to the Quran and the Sunnah, then many times they would be able to save their marriages by the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal. To give an example, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma is reported أَنَّهُ طَلَّقَ امْرَأَتَهُ وَهِيَ حَائِضُ عَلَىٰ أَهْتِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم That he divorced his wife when she was on her menses during the time of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم فسأل عمر ابن الخطاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن ذلك فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مره فليراجعها so Umar, his father, the father of Abdullah ibn Umar, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, he asked the Prophet sallallahu about what his son Abdullah had done. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, command him to take her back. Command him to take her back. ثُمَّ الْيُمْسِكْهَا حَتَّى تَطْهُرْ Then let him keep her as a wife until she becomes pure from the menses. ثُمَّ تَحِيطْ And then she has her menses again ثُمَّ تَطْهُرْ and then she becomes pure again ثُمَّ إِنْ شَاءَ أَمْسَكَ بَعْدْ then if he wants he can keep her again after that وَإِنْ شَاءَ قَلَّقَ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَمَسْ and if he wishes he divorces her before they are intimate once again فَتِلْكَ الْعِدَّةَ الَّتِي أَمَرَ اللَّهُ أَنْ تُطَلَّقَ لَهَا النِّسَاءَ this is the idda that Allah commanded for women to be divorced in this way. So this is an example of something that happened to Abdullah ibn Umar. And it's an example of exactly the principle that we said in the sense that the woman, she can only be divorced in a time of purity when there has not been, uh, as the Prophet said, qabla an yamas, before he is intimate with her, before he goes to her in that way, before he touches her in that way. So there's no intimacy, the menses is finished. At that time, he can issue the divorce and the divorce, it lasts for the three menstrual periods, the idda. At that time, if he wants to take her back, he can take her back. If he wants to let her go, he can let, he lets her go. And if he lets her go and the three menstrual periods finishes, that means the marriage is over, but they can get back together with a new marriage contract without her needing to marry anybody else because here it's just one divorce and that one divorce is not counted once it's finished and it's gone the marriage is dissolved a new marriage contract can be done but obviously it has to be with her consent his consent and the consent of the wali as well so it's not an easy thing but it could potentially happen after that and it's not counted under the three divorce rule that people speak about so frequently in the religion of islam Allah Azza wa Jal said, الطلاق مرتان فإمساكم بمعروف أو تسريح بإحسان طلاق is two times, meaning the process of divorcing and bringing back can happen twice. When it happens the third time, that's it. So this again we said, the man divorces his wife, brings her back inside of the idda. Then he divorces her another time, could be after a year, two years, three years, four years, Divorce another time and brings her back again. So two divorces and two times he brought her back before the idda finished. Now when it comes to the third time, he has a choice. فَإِمْسَاكُمْ بِمَعْرُوفِ Either keep her in good أو تَسْرِيحٌ بِإِحْسَانٍ Or just let her go in the best possible way. But he's not allowed to bring her back again the third time. If he lets her go the third time, he can't bring her back the third time. And after that, she's not allowed to marry anyone. As Allah Azza wa Jalla said, فَإِن طَلَّقَهَا فَلَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ مِن بَعْدُ حَتَّى تَنْكِحَ زَوْجًا غَيْرَهُ That if he divorces her after that, i.e. one time he brought her back, another time he brought her back, the third time, then he cannot marry her again until 
she has married and been intimate with a, another husband. With another husband. And that kind of summarizes the rules of divorce. As we said, I don't really want to get into lots of detail about things like the divorce before the marriage is completed or the divorce of the one that ha they ha she hasn't been alone with her husband or the divorce with the mahara, without the mahara and things like that. We just want to talk about divorce as a general concept so people understand the basic etiquettes of it. And we want to avoid people getting into these habits that we've spoken about. Like these habits that we've seen of people divorcing and then looking for the quick way out. Which scholar will give me a fatwa that my divorce didn't count? Someone says, I divorced my wife 20 times, but the first time I was angry, the second time I was insane, the third time I didn't know what I was doing. And all of this kind of running around and escaping, trying to get their way out of the problems they got themselves into. Let divorce be the absolute last resort. Look at all the steps Allah Azza wa Jal said. فَعِذُوهُنَّ وَهْجُرُوهُنَّ فِي الْمَضَاجِعِ وَضْرِبُوهُنَّ فَبَعِثُ وَحَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهِ وَحَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهَا All of the steps that we spoke about. وَالصُّلْحُ خَيْرُ That let them make peace between, let them send someone from his family, someone from her family, the admonishment, they're leaving, the all the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about. Let talaq be something that is the back, back, last, last option. And let it be an option that the man takes his time to think about. He doesn't rush to give it, he doesn't give it in anger, he doesn't give it and then run around trying to find a fatwa, how he can get himself out of the situation that he got himself into. But instead he takes it seriously and he takes it slowly and he doesn't issue those words and say those words until he's truly given it thought. And if he decides to bring his wife back, he brings her in good and he treats her as a wife, not a mu'allaqa, not leaving her, neither married nor divorced. And if he lets her go, he lets her go with ihsan in the best possible way. So now we come to the issue of the khula'. And the khula' is the right of a woman to break up the marriage. And since the marriage was entered into by the man and it was entered into by the woman, then it can be broken on the side of the man. It can also be broken on the side of the woman, from the side of the woman. But it's in a different, it's in a different, uh, a different way. So the process of the khula is different from the process of the talaq. The word uh, khula linguistically. It means al-izala, it means to get rid of something, to remove something, and to have it cancelled out. And when it's mentioned with the uh, when it's mentioned with the Dhamma, al khula then it refers to uh, particularly the cancelling of the marriage contract from the point of view of the wife, the wife cancelling the marriage contract. So it is a parting between the husband and wife in a specific way in return for something which is given back to the man. And this is the important uh, thing that we have here. That in the khula, one of the major differences between the khula and between the talaq is what they call the khula is they sometimes refer it as talaqun bi'iwad it is a divorce in return for something a divorce in return for something which is given back to the man some some sort of wealth that is given back to the man sometimes they call it a, a female instigated divorce um, and sometimes they just refer to it by the word khula but what it is is it is a divorce that takes place in return for something that is given to the man. And typically that is to give back the mahar or some of the mahar back to the man. This is alluded to in the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, At-talaqu marratan, fa-imsaakum bima'roofin aw tasrihum bi-ihsan, wa la yahillu lakum an ta'khudhu mimma ataytumuhunna shay'an illa an yakhafa an la yuqima hududallah. 
فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا يُقِيمَ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِمَا فِي مَفْتَدَتْ بِهِ تِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ فَلَا تَعْتَدُوهَا وَمَنْ يَتَعَدَّ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal alludes to this process in this particular ayah in which Allah Azza wa Jal said that it's not permissible for you to take anything that you have given them, i given your wife back, unless the two of you fear you will not stick to the limits of Allah. So if you fear you will not stick to the limits of Allah, there is no harm between the two of you in what you agree to be paid back. What you agree to be paid back to the man. The man agrees to be paid back to him. And this is what they call talaqun bi'iwad. It is a divorce where the man is paid back something. And that is what they call the khula, the divorce from the side of, from the point of view of the woman, or from the side or the angle of the woman. And this is reported in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhumah that he said, جاءت امرأة ثابت بن قيس ابن شماس رضي الله عنهما إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقالت The wife of Thabit ibn Qais ibn Shammas May Allah be pleased with them both He came to the Prophet صلى الله She came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم And she said Ya Rasul Allah O oh, Messenger of Allah ما أنقم على ثابت في دين ولا خلق إلا أني أخاف الكفر she said, I'm not blaming Thabit in his religion and I'm not blaming his character, but I fear ingratitude. I'm scared that I'm, in other words, this is, look at her, her the excellence of her behavior because she said, I'm not, she was so honest. She said, I'm not blaming him for his religion. I'm not saying he's a, he's an irreligious man or an unreligious man. I'm not saying that he's got bad character, but I don't feel that I can continue to uphold the responsibilities, the obligations of a wife, and I'm frightened that I'm going to start to be ungrateful towards him. She came to the Prophet So this tells us that the khula, it has to be conducted and it has to be overseen by the judge or the one who is in the position of the judge. She came to the Prophet She said, I'm not blaming him in his religion. I'm not blaming him in his manners, but I'm scared of ingratitude. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, فَتَرُدِّينَ عَلَيْهِ حَدِيقَتَهُ Are you willing to give him back his garden I, that he had given to you? فَقَالَتْ نَعَمْ فَرَدَّتْ عَلَيْهِ She said, yes, I am willing. So it was given back to him وَأَمَرَهُ فَفَارَقَهَا And the Prophet وسلم, commanded him and the marriage, it was broken up between them. The marriage between them, it was dissolved. And that's according to the rajih, the correct opinion among the scholars, that's what actually happens in the khula. It's not actually a talaq. It is a it is more of a fesq. It's The marriage is actually dissolved. The marriage is dissolved. Uh, and it's not uh, It's not the case that the marriage is... like It's not the rules of like the divorce don't apply. Rather, the woman, she gives back to her husband something from what he gave. She gives back the mahar or she gives back something what, she, what the judge commands her to give. And the man in return for that, he breaks up the marriage in a different way to the talaq one month. So it's not like the talaq and it doesn't have the same rules of the man can't return back. When the khula has been issued, the man can't return it back. He doesn't have the right of raja'a, the right to bring his wife back again. Because that khula, once it has been issued, the marriage is over and the marriage is finished, but she waits for one month idda period. And that's to make the transition easy because if she's to leave on the day, that presents difficulty for her and for him. 
Rather, she has that one month of Idda, but he doesn't have the right to bring her back during that Idda period. Now, there's this issue of the Khula, the next question comes then, well, what will happen if the Khula takes place? What will happen if they want to marry again? Yes, they can marry again with a new marriage contract, but once again, when we said about the new marriage contract, it requires uh, a number of things, and it requires, obviously, consent from the husband, consent from the wife, consent from the welly of the wife, so the matter is not an easy one, and it's one in which... Uh, it may not be easy for them to get back together, but the option does exist and it's not counted. If there's a new nikah contract, then the numbers start again from zero. The, the count starts again from zero. So briefly, we have covered the rulings relating to talaq and the rulings relating to the khula, the divorce from the side of the man, the divorce from the side of the woman. There is a, a third kind, which is sometimes mentioned, which is al-fasq which is, uh, in, in, in a way, a khula is a kind of an example of it, but it's where the judge dissolves the marriage. Maybe, for example, uh, the husband has disappeared or something like that, and, uh, and divorce, uh, the, the judge uh, dissolves the marriage. But really, that doesn't really come under our discussion uh, in this Muslim family series, because the reason we mention this is, as we said, so this whole course, I mean, we've spoken so far about the concept of the family. Then we spoke about marriage and the concept of marriage. We spoke about the rights of the husband, the rights of the wife. We spoke about the shared rights, the individual rights. And we spoke about what happens when the marriage breaks down and some basic principles for dealing with that. And finally, we spoke about divorce and from the point of view of the man and the point of view of the woman. And as we said, it's not a matter of encouraging people to get divorced. That's not at all what we want to do. And divorce is something which is disliked by Allah Azza wa Jal if it isn't for a good reason. But for people to be aware of what divorce is from the man's side and the woman's side is very important because it protects them from things that might ruin their family uh, in a permanent way. Like we've seen some men who give the divorce three times in one go and then they go looking for fatawa to get themselves out of the situation they're in and maybe they don't see their kids again and everything gets broken up because of they just got angry one day and they ruin things for themselves. And then the situation becomes difficult because some of the scholars tell them it's counted, some tells them it's not, and they put themselves into trouble. As for the woman's side, as it relates to the khula, then the woman, her responsibility is not to seek the khula just like that for no reason. And the judge has every right on the topic of the khula to ask the couple to go through counseling before giving the khula. He has every right to say to the woman, I'm not going to give you the khula until I look at the issue and whether you need counseling and so on. And until he might say, send um, a person to negotiate for her and a person to negotiate for him. We've seen all the safeguards that exist within marriage. So ultimately, this kind of brings us to the end of the topic of marriage, but not the end of the topic of the Muslim family. We're now going to go on to look at the or one of the, the major fruits of marriage, which is children, having children. We're going to look at the relationship of children with parents and the relationship of parents with children, the issues of the rights of the parents, the rights of the child, and how those dynamics work together. But in this short course, we've hoped, we've tried to bring you, inshallah ta'ala, as much information as possible about the husband and wife, because as we said, that's how the Muslim family started. It started with Adam and Hawa, alayhim as -salam, and then Allah Azza wa Jal, sent out from them many men and many women came out from them the entire of Bani Adam came out from Adam and Hawa which is the start of the Muslim family after that Adam and Hawa had children and that is where we're going to go to next the issue of the children and the issue of the parents the rights of the parents the rights of the children how to educate your children the responsibilities in terms of Islamic education, in terms of worldly education, all of these issues, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to cover in this kind of, if you like, second part or second segment of this short course brought to you by Al-Madrasatul Umariya. 
After that, we're then going to go on to look at some of the other issues in a shorter part. We're going to look, inshallah, at the relatives, um, things like maybe siblings and the wider relatives and what their rights and obligations are. But definitely a big chunk of the course now coming up is going to be on the topic of parents and children. And we're just taking that like in the same chronological order that the beginning of the Muslim family was Adam, Hawa, then they had children. So we talked about husband and wife, and now we're going to talk about children. And we're going to talk from both angles, as we said, the rights of the children and the rights of the parents together. So we're going to look at what responsibilities do parents have towards children and what responsibilities do children have towards parents. And we will, we'll still look at that in terms of marriage as well. Like when marriage gets involved, what are the children's responsibilities towards the parents, the wife's responsibilities towards her parents after she gets married. All of this, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to cover on the topic of children and parents. Inshallah ta'ala. Now, one thing I would like to do uh, before we conclude, and I think this is important, is to recommend on the topic of marriage, if I were to recommend some books in English on the topic of marriage, what would I recommend? And I usually recommend this series of four books because they are absolutely amazing. And indeed, I was careful to read through uh, these books, or at least to read at least one of them before we did this course, because of the benefit that these books contain. And that is the marriage series by Sheikh Mohammed Al-Jibali. And this is a beautiful series of four books on the qualities of the spouses, on marital intimacy, on the rights of the husband and the rights of the wife, and then the issue of children. It's a series of four books. And I often give it as a gift to people who are going to get married. I think it's a, it's a must read for everyone who is married or is thinking of getting married, that they should read these four books because really they have in them every or a large number of the ahadith and the ayat that relate to marriage and the benefits that can be taken from them. So that's something I would definitely recommend people to go to uh, to get more information about the rights of the husband, the rights of the wife, and some of the etiquettes of the husband and the wife living together that maybe we didn't cover in in as much detail in this course. But it's only a short course and we've tried to cover as much as we can, but there's still going to be things that we left out. That's all we have time for in this episode, inshallah ta'ala. And in the next episode, as we said, we're starting a whole new segment on the topic of parents and children, children and parents. And then later on, to go on to the topic of the wider family members and their rights as well. That's what Allah made easy for me to mention. And Allah Azza wa knows best. Wa salatu wa salam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.